Page 13, Jingle Bells. On page 15, I think it is, there's stuck, stocking stuffers again and more sight reading. And the sight reading is getting more complicated. You know, they're suggesting like one of these a day. Just take one line a day and try and sight read it. You don't need to spend a lot of time sight reading and you're not practicing this. You're just trying to play through it and see if you can do it. However, I want to talk Jingle Bells. Going through a system that I use to learn a new piece of music. That is, I look it over. I see it's two pages long or three pages long. It's two pages long. Treble and bass clef, four four time signature. And we got a bunch of quarter notes and eighth notes and stuff. We've had all this before. I think we can do it. I'm going to do this both hands together because most of the time it's just one hand or the other playing. So I'm going to shorten the video a little bit. But otherwise, I would go through one hand at a time and make sure I understand what each hand is doing before I put them together. Let's try, see if we can do both hands together here. You're starting with fourth finger on here, and put your hand here. And the right hand is third finger on the E, and up where it's middle C position. Okay, and just quarter notes. One and two and three and. Just about eighth notes. See what the idea is? Let's go down to measure 13. You're here, quarter notes, and that right hand, come, the left hand comes over for one note. So, and then it can come back down. Actually, because you have a page turn, when, when you're done with that, get up, get ready to turn the page. Then turn the page so that you're ready to go on. Because when you turn a page, the beat needs to be a steady beat. Don't mess up the beat because you're turning a page. Mm -mm. Steady beat. And here, the right, left hand isn't doing anything. So it can go ahead and just turn the page while you're playing this. And you, we practice page turns if we have to. So, because you're doing this motion in one hand and you're playing in the other at the same time. Because of measure 17, it's both hands together. So it's here. C and a G and an E. Lowering the hand down. And then the third measure over is measure 19. Yeah. Now at the bottom, measure, it's the last two measures here. The left hand has the C chord, and the right hand has the C. Just reach up to the octave here. You don't need to move, just reach up and here. Now once you're there, you can collapse, but reach up to get there. One, two, three, up. So once I have the notes and rhythms figured out and the hands are okay, no hesitations anywhere, and then I think about the articulation. We're going to connect the phrase, connect, lift up, lift up, and then staccato. Lifting up, like taking a breath between the phrases, and then they stick in a few staccatos. Look at measure 13. Accent, just play a little louder. And by the way, you've got to be turning the page with the left hand as you do this. So measure 17, it's staccato. I'm hinging at the wrist, bum, bum, bum. Twenty-two. The staccato is only the last two notes. Don't. It's not. It's, they're not all three staccatos. Just two. And, yeah. Then at the end, the last two measures. The staccato accent. A little extra. Let the wrist collapse here on a bone, and it's a little louder and. Up, uh, staccato, short. Then we think about the dynamics. MF at the beginning, and it applies to the melody. Well, at the beginning it's all melody, but moderately loud. Mezzo forte, whatever you think sort of loud is. That makes the accent a note at the bottom of the page a loud note, because the accent just takes it up a notch. Here. Then on measure 17, it's loud, and that's the melody. This keep in the background. We don't play in the same. It's, yeah. it's the melody we want to hear. So keep this other stuff in the Second line on measure 21, come down a little bit moderately loud. 
Measure 25 loud again. And then the last line down the muscle, sort of loud. Except the last note is, is loud with an accent. I don't agree with that. Because loud is loud, and the accent would take it up to very loud. I don't really think you need very loud at the end. I think loud would do it. So either it's MF with an accent, or it's just loud. Either one. A speed. Oh, it's a happy piece. don't copy me. You get into it and you make it yours. You don't have to go that speed. You can actually do more with the dynamics than what they're showing. If you feel it, try it out. Experiment. Let's play it together very slowly and double check the notes and the rhythms. Now I can't do the page turn and play with me. It doesn't work. So I'm going to do page 13 and then I'm going to stop and turn the page and then I'm going to count in again another four counts and then I'll do page 14. So as you can play along, make sure you're playing the same notes I'm playing at the same time I'm playing it. And this is after you've learned it. Don't learn it with the play with me. Learn it first and then check it with the play with me. So I'll give us four counts. Now keep in mind on these play with me's I don't do dynamics. I'm not doing louds and softs. I'm doing them all about the same. I was just checking notes and rhythms is all this is for. One, two, ready. Go. One and two and three and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest, four, stop, turn the page, one, two, ready, go. Now there's a duet for this at the bottom. I'd like to do that and you play what you just played, but I'm going to pick it up speed wise. We're going to play it faster and I'll, I'll leave it to you to make the page turn because we're going to go through the whole thing straight through with no interruptions, I hope. I need you to go up an octave again on the keyboard. Let's pretend that middle C instead of here is up here. So instead of here, you're up here. And play it up here. I'll give us four counts. One, two, ready, go.
Thank you.